Welcome to CSC Talks. I'm your host, Barrington Miller, and today I'm here with Paul Rosen. Um, the purpose of this thing that we're doing and have decided to do is we just want to talk and we want to let our audience know a little bit more than, than the KPIs, than stock performance, indices, turnover ratios, all of that. Uh, you know what, ironically, this is the bluest day of the year. And uh, I thought it was, um, I thought it was appropriate to, to just talk. And there are people struggling right now with uh, mental health, uh, mental health awareness, attitudes, isolation, anxiety, the list could go on and on. And we just want you to know that you're not alone. And to help us with this discussion and dialogue is Paul Rosen. Welcome to the show, Paul. Great to be here. Always great to see you, Barrington. Hope you're well. Uh, thank you. And, you know, that's a great starting off point. Um, I don't even know what well means. I know what it means to me, but uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of people who aren't, but there are, there are, there are things going on. And how how are you doing how are you coping with this how's your family and friends doing? thank you for asking um my mental health currently i think is is pretty good uh, i'll put that on a context of where it's been at different times in my life um obviously covid has been an alienating experience for most of us there's a sense of um groundhog day every day is the same and it's frustrating to be denied some of the uh, healthy outlets that we choose to, you know, kind of balance our life, whether it's going to the gym or getting together with friends. We have had a lot of those avenues, you know, denied to us. And we're kind of forced now to spend a lot of time alone or in small groups indoors. And I think it's fair to say that that abundance of time can be a challenge for a lot of people. Um, and there's always the, um, the risk that that time could be put you could be put to sort of activities that in the long run are not healthy, but in the short time are very soothing. And I think that uh, I've worked really hard through the pandemic era to try to really focus on developing healthy habits or reinforcing healthy habits that I had already developed prior to COVID to try to you know, improve my mental and my physical health. And um, so I, I'm, I feel very fortunate uh, that I have managed to keep my mood pretty, pretty solid throughout this last year or so. Uh, there's definitely been moments of high anxiety. I've had anxiety issues throughout most of my life. Um, and there were times where I was afraid to get out of bed in the morning for whatever reason, real or perceived. And then I got out of bed anyways, because action is the greatest thing, you know, we have in our toolkit to deal with the the mental health issues that all of us face. Anyone that says they are perfect mental health, I think that alone is a mental health issue. I think life is, on this planet at all times can be challenging for all of us. And one of the things that I think that makes it harder for all of us is that there's this sort of stoical perception that you should put on a brave face, signal to the world that everything's perfect at all times. And for most of us, that's really not the truth, but by seeing other people signal it, it reinforces our own issues, whether they're inadequacies or insecurities, because if everyone else is so fabulous, what, you know, what the heck's wrong with me? And it's incumbent, I think, upon people to try to be as honest as possible, because not to say that misery loves company, but you can feel less estranged and less unusual if you realize that the stuff you're going through is pretty common, pretty ubiquitous. And so I think what you're doing here and what other channels are doing is trying to normalize a conversation and take it out from, you know, like a deep, dark, deep, dark, scary room and, and open the blinds and turn the lights on and, and have people that, you know, don't have to pretend to be omnipotent acknowledge that they have mental health issues and I'm, I'm certainly one of those people I've had mental health issues like everyone I gotta believe everyone has and COVID has in some cases made it more challenging but in other cases it's also been a great opportunity 
to really, you know, sort of go inside and do the kind of hard work to make sure that you're addressing whatever mood imbalances you're feeling with healthy responses. You've touched on a, uh, a few things. Um, you know what, the early part of what you said, talking about the physical and mental health, it's the brain is not, is a muscle <laughs> and it has to be trained. It has to be worked. It has to be um, utilized in a, in a healthy and proper way. And as far as the manifestation of the great life people are living or having, and um, you know what, social media plays such a huge part in this. Um, I mean, there's a lot of positives that have come from social media, but there's also, <laughs> you put out what you want people to see. It's, it, it can be extremely damaging. Um, if all you see is the fabulous life and, and the parties and the cars and money or resorts and, and all of those things. And you're looking around going, I'm in, I'm in my basement, you know, in pajama bottoms, you know, what's, why am I not doing those things? Um, and especially for young kids, I'm, I'm really worried about what COVID is doing to the next generation growing up of just being nervous and having high anxiety. And I, I think it's, I think it's so important. We all have, <laughs> I think, I think what you said, it is, it is more common for people to have some type of recognized either uh, mental health issue or trauma um, than not. And it's, it's how we, how we deal with it. Um, I, I kind of want to get a little personal and, you know, if it is too much, just, just say no. Um, what, what was it? What was it for you? Um, was it when you were younger? Was it, you know, being an entrepreneur, being uh, a head of a company, a board member, all of those things? Or were there different things at various stages? Uh, let's yeah, I think everything begins in bit. everything begins in childhood, right? This is like the the forge where our, our psyches are built. And um, my childhood, in in many senses, was great. I had loving parents. I grew up in a solid middle class background, but I also was the victim of abuse. I suffered um, various forms of abuse when I was young, and at that point. Um, you know, there was no context to sort of understand it. I just sort of buried it and uh, continued on leading, you know, my young life. And as I got older, you really can't bury sort of childhood trauma for forever. It will eventually be like the hand sticking out of the grave and it'll, it'll come back and sort of claim you. Um, so I think a lot of my sort of, uh, I guess, challenges I have experienced um, did sort of emanate in childhood. Um, certainly the career I chose definitely, like I would say that I came out of childhood with a, a, a case of PTSD. Um, and, and then I would say I went into a career which is PTSD sensitive, <laughs> namely, you know, the, the life of an entrepreneur is a roller coaster ride straight up or straight down, or maybe not straight up or straight down, but rarely a straight line. And I, I chose that for myself and um, many times found that I was having, you know, outsized reactions to things that were happening in my day to day. Like, okay, I see what's happening, but my emotional response was overwhelming me. Intellectually, I could figure out what had to be done or, or what I did wrong, but the emotional toil, sometimes seemed so disproportionate to what was actually ha happening. You know, it could get to the point where I was, you know, short of breath or having anxiety attacks. And it wasn't commensurate with whatever the so-called business threat was at the time. So clearly, I think, having done a lot of introspection, what was happening is I was being triggered by the stresses of entrepreneurship and business to um, issues that were much more profound, if you will, and much more sort of psychologically threatening. So we all sort of have what I call an identity mythology, who we think we are. And a lot of this is like 
the way we want to be perceived by the outside world. But then behind that is who we really, really are. And sometimes when the mythology that we want to portray doesn't really mix, mix with the reality of who we are, that creates sort of cognitive dissonance and it can cause all sorts of reactions. So, you know, just to be really like fully transparent, uh, a lot of my solutions for dealing with my childhood issues related to the pursuit of two things, accomplishment, because if I was accomplished, I could be loved straight up. Like I was sort of somehow when I was young, I was taught that love is conditional upon success. Uh, this is just the way it was. My parents would have loved me regardless, but there was clear pressure to be successful. And I wasn't successful when I was younger. So I felt, you know, under loved. I didn't deserve it. Um, and then another, so I've spent a lot of my life trying to build this mythology around being a really successful person, but it's often come at a personal toll. The other way I would say I would deal with childhood trauma in a less healthy way was to engage in addictive like behavior, whether it was consuming cannabis, consuming alcohol, or consuming other sort of um, um, narcotics or other ways of sort of like self-healing or self-medicating. Uh, I did that for a while. And you can do that right in plain sight because no one's going to judge you because it's such a part of our culture. Um, but as I've got older, I found that those strategies, if you will, were not really successful. They were inflicting damage when they should, rather than uh, in uh, helping me sort of work on, you know, more therapeutic responses. And I got, you know, to a point where I didn't want to, at least as much as I could, I wanted to minimize any response to mental health issues that was not at least um, long term going to be positive. So sometimes you got to go through the pain is what I'm saying. And a lot of these things like if I was, you know, made a lot of money in the business world, yay, I feel great about myself because I've achieved success. So therefore, I'm great. And I, what I really believe is that your self worth is not your net worth is not your self worth. And in our, in, our, in our society, that's a hard lesson because we conflate act, you know, our, our net worth with our actual worth. In fact, we celebrate wealth and status to a very unhealthy degree. Um, so while I still pursue success in my business career, I'm trying to not turn it into a referendum on my value as a human being. And when it comes to strategies for when I'm feeling stressed or feeling a little bit overwhelmed, then, you know, I don't drink anymore. Um, and I really am trying to focus on healthy responses, exercise, introspection, meditation, yoga, and, you know, and a good night's sleep. And, and let me say, this is not easy stuff. I'm 57 years old. I didn't really start succeeding on better strategies until I was in my 50s. Um, so this is everyone's own personal journey. Um, but I do feel that, um, it starts with uh, knowing thyself. Like it sells at the uh, Oracle of Delphi. It's two words, know thyself. And the more you know yourself, the more you can figure out what you need to do to create a healthy therapeutic response to the mental health issues that you and everybody else is experiencing. Some people have it worse, uh, no doubt about it. It's all on a spectrum. But just because someone has it worse doesn't mean that you don't have to deal with your own shit as well. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> truer words uh haven't been spoken um paul i i don't know how to thank you i i don't know i i don't have the words um no need thank you for what you're doing sincerely and um everyone put up your hand to say do you have ever had a bad day <laughs> ever <laughs> yeah had you a know bad what? Month? if i had a third one it would be yeah. up yeah um I'm this so, is like, i i want over, I want just somebody, somebody to listen to this and, and just realize, and like you said, maybe you start in your fifties, maybe you start in your twenties or teens, um, you talk to somebody, just realize that you are not alone. There are people like you, <laughs> there are people going through worse stuff. There are people going through better stuff and we are all in this together. Um, Paul, I, just want to say on you know on behalf of the canadian securities exchange but on behalf of myself and the rest of the human population thank you for sharing your experiences with us um my name's been barrington miller from the canadian securities exchange and i've interviewed paul rosen and 
This has been an episode of CSE Talks.